Welcome back to the Elder Kings, although not quite yet. It's been a couple of days since the last episode, and I apologise for that, but I have been hard at work on the Ascension stuff. I did end up rewriting pretty much all of it in terms of code, so I need to give myself an extra day just to make sure it's all working fine. It's good now. We're ready to go. Before that, though, the series is almost at an end. I think we've done everything we want to do with it. I think we've got a pretty cool story. There are a couple of other things left to do, and I've got an idea for something, but I'm not sure if it's possible yet, so I've got to test that first before I promise anything. But uh, we we're getting there. It's close to being over. So, in the comments below, I want to get some feedback from you guys on what series should come next. So I've put a straw poll, both in the comment and in the description, with a bunch of total conversions, or maybe even the base game, if, if that's something that comes up. Um, and I want you guys to go vote on that so I know what to do and what people want to see, because at the end of the day, I only want to play things people want to watch, because I'm happy to play anything involving CK2. The other thing was... I'm interested in doing, well, me and a couple of friends are interested in a CK2 podcast type thing. Where we'll just have a very easy game of CK2 in the background, something like Venice, where we don't have to focus very much. And we're going to talk over the top of it, but probably stuff that's not related to CK2 most likely. So, so a podcast with CK2 and occasional CK2 talk going on. If that's the type of thing you're interested in, obviously these, these would be probably a couple of hours in length, probably an hour plus at least. If that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments. I'd kind of want to hear some feedback on that because i love doing podcasts i've done some before and they're pretty successful up on soundcloud but we stopped doing them uh a while back and i kind of want to pick it back up again so i figured if we put some ck2 in the background with people who have played ck2 for quite a while i think that could be interesting let me know what you think thank you oh right yeah of course the elder kings shit okay we probably should carry on then eh elrang the cautious so those of you who saw the last episode, this is appropriate. Those of you who saw the last episode will know that we basically got all the Deidreic artifacts. Uh, close to all of them. At least one from every Deidre besides Jigalag because it's broken, but that doesn't matter. Um, all for the purpose of the Ascension. The great Elrang gets his own plane of oblivion so we can use him as an off-map power. Because it's kind of got to the stage now where he's invincible. No one can touch him. All his sort of big rivals, like uh, Olken in Akavir, got assassinated. Manny Marco. Um, what did we do with Manny Marco? We turned him into a chicken and then had him killed, right? Uh, Orkanum is dead. There's not really anything left. He's conquered all of his enemies. He's ready to carry on. And, of course, that means we'll also be able to play as his son, Felathisimir, who is the Dragonborn, which will open up some things for us as well. We could light the dragon fires, although that would be a bit rude, seeing as that would block out our dad. So, should we get to it right away? I'm just trying to think if there's anything else we need to do. Someone left a comment. Upgrade your buildings. Sure. I'm going to upgrade my buildings. This was under the pretense that I have so much cash that I might as well be upgrading the buildings. But to be honest, everything upgrades in a day anyway. So I could just do this off camera. Like spend all the cash. That was sort of going to be my plan anyway. But here you go. Just to please that one guy. The buildings are upgraded. We're done. What, what is this? Oh, we have another. Right, let's get rid of this. Yeah, we're done now. So... Alright, I'm just trying to think. Anything else? Don't think so. We've got everything we need. We've got the Amulet of Kings. And of course we can check over this. I mean, the King Saviors hide. Ebony Mask. Oh, Ebony Mail. Yep, we're good. We need 30,000 Prestige and 15,000 Favor. And for those of you thinking, this isn't in my Elder Kings. It's because I've... It's because I made it. We all came to the conclusion this is the best way to move on to the next character. Alright. Ready for some Alrang fanfic? I sure know I am. The Aeliad Ascension. It is done, you announced to the core. I have gathered the artifacts necessary. Today marks my ascension to a new plane where I watch over the alien people for eternity and ensure we will never fall so close to extinction again. The courtiers looked agitated and concerned. You overhear your marshal remarking to your physician about your mental health, but both quickly disappear to the back of the court when they notice your gaze. They think me a fool, but I will prove them wrong. He is cautious, though. You gesture to your majesty and heir. Fetch the artifacts immediately and the amulet of kings. Bring them to the temple. You sit for a while in the chambers, considering whether or not this is truly the right decision. A few courtiers slip outside and you hear the ever-increasing voices. You stand and survey the council chambers one last time, taking in the faces of your few remaining anxious courtiers, before heading out the White Gold Tower in the direction of the Temple of the Ancestors. I think that's fair. I would also be pretty anxious if uh, the Queen of England and the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth decided, you know, she was going to become a god. As you head to the temple, you notice your council, courtiers and others following. Whilst passing by houses, the citizens of the city of White Gold notice the ever-growing crowd and join it. Before long, it feels as if the entirety of Tamriel itself is packed into the temple district, with the crowd barely having enough room to part and let you through. Let them come. I like the artwork, by the way. This is all artwork I found in the um, Elder Kings folder. 
Besides some that I've made myself, like this one. The beginning. Standing outside the temple doors are your council members and son, Paul of Thistamir. In his hands is the amulet of kings, glowing at his touch. An elderly Imperial shuffles over, and you realise it's the head mage of the arcane university. Obviously not the arc mage, because they're the one in Morrowind. I'm not here to interfere, my lord, he says, just here to observe. You take the amulet from your son, and the glowing within quickly stops. From this day forward, you exclaim to the crowd, I relinquish my title as Imperator of Tam Riel. My son, Polythysmir, shall succeed me as Imperator and leader of the alien people. Now to what's truly important. The Temple of the Ancestors. Amid the statues of the alien ancestors, you begin strategically placing the various Diedrich and enchanted artifacts. Polythysmir, your counselors, and head major will join you in the temple. You place the Amulet Kings within the Dragonfire Basin before climbing onto it yourself. Whatever happens, do not interfere. Arang the Divine. As you begin the ritual, the ground shakes and the temple walls begin to crack. This is madness! You'll kill us all! Shouts the head mage, but you ignore him entirely. The walls begin to cave, and the head mage and council waste no time on their retreat. On his way out, the marshal grabs your son by the arm. Hurry, my lord, it's too late for him, we must leave. The finale. As the crowd run in every direction away from the temple, you remain stalwart. Looking out of the collapsing temple, you catch your son's gaze. You stop the ritual, give a simple nod, and shout one last incantation. A blinding ball of light appears and in an instant consumes you. It is as if there is nothing at all. You imagine a world, not unlike Tamriel. A tower like the great alien constructs of old in the forest like Sirod, before the coming of man. Though it's not Tamriel, it's shaped in its image, but the realm is entirely new. And your own. My own plane of oblivion. Will be known as the Ascended. And then everybody in the family gains the trait Divine Bloodline. And the capital White Gold becomes Elrang Divinity. And so does Elrang and Felithismir and the, the, the dynasty, basically. Elrang the Cautious dies. Clearly wasn't that cautious. Malaran Elrang has ascended to heaven at the age of 432. He ascended to his own plane. Although not especially blessed, we hope Elrang will find peace in the afterlife. Excuse me? Huh. Malarang Felithisimir, born with the soul of a dragon. Felithisimir has the very favour of Elrang the Ascended. Felithisimir will surely lead us into an era of prosperity that none could ever hope to match. Long live Malaran Felithisimir, but he's not immortal yet, so he probably won't live that long. So be it. A new rule. This is the only way I could do this event. <laughs> the light quickly collapses, creating an enormous shockwave, not knocking you and the remainder of the crowd to their to the ground. Get out the way, tooltip. The temple still stands, though anything of value will surely be destroyed beneath the rubble. You walk over to the room, skeptical that'll even stand much longer. Your marshal and steward quickly follow. My lord, what's done is done. We should call the guard to help clear this, but the steward stops. The shaking has returned, this time they're from a blob. A blob? Above. So close. A joyous laughter sounds across the Imperial Isle. It's almost deafening. You are correct. It is done. The voice is familiar, but warped. Know that I will always be watching, and where the barriers of oblivion permit, I will guide you. That would been so much better with, uh... Patrick Stewart voicing that. Amongst the stone, you notice a red gem glowing faintly. Father, the amulet. Oh, and in between all this, this old woman, 61-year-old lustful woman, who was also a drunkard, sent me a beautifully delicately gift wrap today. Oh, thank you. It's a, it's a blade with a gilded hilt. How romantic. Oh. Reverence. As word spreads across what happened, as... <laughs> As word of what happened at the Temple of the Ancestors. As word... Fucking hell. <clears throat> Edit all that out. As word spreads of what happened at the Temple of the Ancestors, many alien rulers have begun to find themselves in reverence of Elrang, the saviour of their race. Most have began to incorporate him into their religious rituals, with some exclusively worshipping him as a god. Even followers of the older Elven religions have embraced this new branch, still acknowledging the divinity of Auriel and the Pantheon, but with Elrang alongside them, as a mortal who became god. Now there's a random event, for all the round provinces to have a chance at becoming Elrang, divinity, uh, the religion. So some of them, as you can see, all round provinces, 300% chance is because they are Oriel and Zealous and Aeliad. Um, or something like that. Or they had a high opinion about Elrang. I forgot how I coded it. I did this a, a while ago. So... Now, that only makes the provinces, so it's the lower people, the peasants, after hearing about this, you know, godly event have converted. But the rulers themselves are more sceptical. So if we go to religions map, okay, you know what, we did pretty damn well. This is probably the best I've seen it uh, in a couple of tests. So Elrang Divinity is the new religion. Um, so it's, I like this symbol as well, it's a combination of the Pyandonic and uh, Oriel. 
I think that makes the most sense seeing as he's trying to unify the elves. Our own divinity, High Keeper, Utamir. Untamir is the, the equivalent of a Pope, basically. Um, so we've got a lot of extra options here. Mainly, in the Religions tab, this took a while to set up. That's right, the College of Cardinals, or as it's called in this, just the Electors. This is going to give us a bit more depth in terms of religion gameplay, because obviously if someone else um, controls more Cardinals, than us, they can have a lot of power over the religion. I wanted to do this rather than having uh, Felithisimir become like the head of the religion, because then he'd be way too powerful. And I quite like the idea of having this whole like college we can manipulate. We've also got five holy sites. So we've got uh, Temple of the Ancestors in white gold. We've got Tiguna, which is on uh, Pyandonia, here in Abarbus. We have uh, Holly Falls, which is in Alanor's capital, the province of Alanor, funnily enough. Senalana, which is actually the first province we started in as Aurang. I think it's this one here. This is where Aurang first came from in uh, Valenwood. He was the, the Duke of Senalana, as I recall, in episode one, all, the, all those months ago. And then we have, uh, what was the final one? Moonsweet. I figured that made the most sense, seeing as the alien people sort of came back to power, taking over elsewhere from the Khajiit after they were wiped out by the Ideal Masters. So, plus, uh, this one is sort of a double meaning, because this is also an Ideal Masters holy site. So this also being a holy site for our rank, I, I figured it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? We've got a lot of work to do in terms of the religion map now. We've got to get all of these holy sites together and uh, put a... Uh, an L-Rang divinity, or an L-Rang worshipping alien ruler in charge of that. Um, we've also got to sort out the camps. We've got a lot to do. We've got to have a coronation. We've got to sort out the dragon fires. More importantly, oh, who could this be? What a handsome gentleman here in the off-map tab. Oh, of course he's aloof. Oh, great. Well, that means we can't do anything with him right now. Um, hopefully he will uh, stop being aloof soon. That's understandable. He did just make a new realm. And here's his... Uh, his, uh, the equivalent of his Western Protector. Malaran Aruz the Cautious of the Alien Ascension. This guy's pretty cool. He's a Dramora. Kind of. An alien Dramora, anyway. And there's obviously, uh, our rank himself. Sweet. That worked out quite well. I'm surprised that worked first time. So. Now we're a Dragonborn. What does that mean we can do? Well, um, well, firstly, let's sort out the round promises before we have a look at, uh, what fella this may could do that L rank couldn't become a great general. I feel like that's appropriate. Domain too big. Um, we need to start the conversion pretty immediately because I can't imagine many people are the same religion as us. We've got a few. There's probably about half a dozen people, and all of these people who converted instantly were the people in the Imperial Isle who actually saw it. Um, besides that, it's just peasants. Like I said, if we look here, the religion of the province is that, but the actual rulers aren't. I figured this gives us some uh, things to do in terms of religion. Can we ask him to convert? He won't. Uh, if we give him, if we can somehow make him, um, I think we're going to be able to do it. We might have to sack him. All right, so we need to find someone of high learning. Whoops. We need to find someone of high learning who likes us. Let's have a look. Um... Drawing court, yes. Valerica in the, in the soul can. Interesting. Sure, so that's Harkon from the Skyrim DLCs. That's his, uh, his wife. Weird. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Undead are rising for their tombs in white gold. I guess Elrang disturbed them. Hide the fighter skills. Uh, it'll never happen. Sorry. Okay, excellent. To find out, accept your gracious invitation. So she just left the Ideal Master to come join us. Let's see if we can convert her. Okay, well, you're useless to us now. Goodbye. You can go back to wherever you came from. Between your spell drink, your amulet. Nice. So we need to find... What about her? She's alien. She's got 29 learning. Sure. I'd like to court. Come on, please convert. Uh, request a religious conversion. Is she zealous? She is zealous. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> See, this is going to get dull. Um, this guy's not zealous. He's ideal masters and alien. Maybe we could convince him. Maybe a bit of gold might uh, change his mind. Send a gift. Now, I think we've got a higher chance to convert ideal masters because they're an unreformed religion, right? Or at least uh, quite a weak religion. I'll convert to the Aran Divinity Faith forthwith. Thank you very much. Was ideal masters and now is converted to essentially the enemy of his previous religion. 
Oh my god, we have so much converting to do. Alright, we'll start here. See what we can do. No other rulers. Okay, this is going to take a while. So, what else can we do here? Um, well, that's irrelevant. We can't do that at all. So, I will remove that at some stage. We go on a pilgrimage to compose a book. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, it feels like ages since we've done this. Shall chronicle my family history? That seems appropriate. By the way, my dad uh, <clears throat> made his own realm of oblivion. Called a tournament. A white gold coronation. I feel that's appropriate. Okay, let's have a look. Obviously, we've lost all of the artifacts that were destroyed during the Ascension. We did keep the Amulet of Kings, though. Um, which means we will need to... Oh, shit. The Ogmer Infinium. That's what we need to do straight away. Uh, oh, wait. I know what I can do. We can use that fancy button I made. Uh, search for a Diedrich Scholar. We need to search for a Scholar of Hermes Mora. And I can't give out land to anyone who asks. And we lost the trait wounded. So we got the trait wounded when the... Uh, when the shockwave blew up, when when our rank blew up the temple, I don't know if you noticed that. I was like, "Oh, this is a nice little detail that does nothing." There's much about Hermes Mora I'd like to learn. Becomes the cult of Hermes Mora. What? Am I gonna be able to convert back? Oh no. Hang on. Um, can we request religious conversion? Pin is greater than eighty. Who is this woman that he's married to? Genuinely, just a random imperial. Okay, let's try and convert our wife first. Because then we can always convert back if this converts us fully. Um, um, fuck it. Okay, we're good. <laughs> that was risky. All right. So that's our rank. Go away, our rank. Look at this. We've got two buttons now. Our rank empire and Hermes Mora. Oh, shit. We already have 7,000 Arda. Oh, because we're dragonborn. Oh, of course. Wow. Okay. Sure. Um, we need 8,000, right, for the... Oh, no, no, wait. Oh, we do need 8,000, because the Ogmer Infinium is just, uh... Is an immortal? Ticked. Is he immortal? A dream mage, brawny, strong. Uh, I'm not sure he is. Maybe it's because we've got a divine bloodline or something? Something else must be triggering it. Well, he's not immortal, so... We just need 8,000 Arda, because, uh... Because why not, apparently? Alright, um, can we give him something? Now, let's have a look through our artifacts. We should probably equip the, uh, Lost the Arconian Maid. We can get rid of that. I don't think it's necessary right now. Vassal Opinion plus five is probably going to be handy. Um, let's see. So, we've got some... Ring of Necromancy gives learning plus three and health plus one. Circle of Omnipotence gives more or less an all stats buff. You know what? We're going to swap this out for the Ring of Necromancy. Because that was what Elrond got at the very start of uh, the playthrough. Deidrech armor. Let's equip that. Oh, we've got another Deidrech armor. Okay. And obviously the Amulet of Kings. We can actually equip it now. Look at this. General opinion plus five. Battle opinion plus five. And an all stats boost. Really handy. We've got a lot of amulets we could give to Hermes Mora. We kept Orgnum's Coffer, which is really good. Um, I wonder what other amulets we actually lost. Or oh, sorry, our artifacts we lost there. Alright. Hermes Mora. I'm going to offer you... I imagine Deidre Kama would get us a lot with him. Uh, oh, apparently we can't give him that. What about the Ring of Sunfire? Here you go. All right, we just need one more good artifact now. Ebony Ring, why not? And... A snake? How close are we now? 904, okay. We can have a camel? And then I don't mind letting it just tick while we get those last few... Uh, Oh no, got it. Here you go, have a gold ring. Just in case anything terrible does happen. Claim the Ogmar Infinium. Thanks, pal. Alright, we know what to do at this stage. Manipulate the Ogmar Infinium. Now, we could fuck this up, right? The Ogmar Infinium sits before you. We've done this once before, but I don't remember it. It seems to shimmer and pulsate with swirling currents of magical energy. And with magical energy. Thus far, you have only read small excerpts, granting you limited pieces of the Ogma's power, but you have the choice of absorbing the Ogma's knowledge and power in its entirety. Doing so will destroy the artifact by granting near godlike powers. Sure. Interesting. So we didn't get all those crazy traits we got as, uh... Oh, there's only 50% chance we gain Immortal as well. Interesting, right. Black tentacle-like strands of cold energy reach forth from the book. You recall in agony as they pierce your mind, worming their way into your thoughts. It was in fades to an absolute black. I'm really struggling to read today. It's also clear to me now. We gain immortal. 50% chance of getting immortal. Uh, we gain the trait genius and mystic, though. 
Plus two intrigue, one to two a chip, four landing, one martial, one diplomacy. Come on. Did we, did we get it? Definitely got genius. Immortal, immortal, immortal. I don't think we got it. Oh, no. I think maybe we need higher learning, or maybe there's a there's a chance based on your traits. Maybe if we're a genius and we read it, we unlock all of its secrets. Because obviously Alran got that obnoxious, like, legendary mage, legendary warrior, just everything from it. This guy's already a legendary mage, but I don't know if that'll affect things too much. Hmm. Okay. So we've got to start... I'm going to start saving up for it again. Um, which might sound crazy. But I really want to see if we can get... Obviously, we've got to get Immortal somehow. So... We can have this Valdrinker Amulet. We don't need that. And... Uh, Amulet Domination. So what we're going to do as... Polythysme. Firstly, we should probably have a coronation, right? No, we've got to keep the last tail going here, mate. We went through too much to get that at this stage. All right, let's go ahead and have the White Gold coronation. To celebrate the beginning of my reign as ruler of White Gold Tower, nothing more appropriate than a coronation celebration at the center of the Imperial City. This is written really strangely. The only question is who shall direct the ceremony? I shall crown myself. That might be because this dude, who looks a little bit like our rank, is unlanded. So let's grant him the Temple of the Ancestors so that he has a place in the Imperial City. Um, I would crown myself? Sure. That makes sense. Okay, we're going to lose... Uh, oh, because we had Mystic, but I imagine we also had something else, didn't we? Uh, what did we have? We had Alchemist. Well, Alchemist broken anyway, so we don't mind losing that. That's a shame, but okay. Oh? Some prospective students... Are oh, is he? He's part of the Majors Guild. Oh, he's a master wizard. That makes sense. Sure. Uh, maybe we want to switch that and join the Greybeards. Because he has... He's a Dragonborn. So he can learn the Thune probably almost instantly. Let's decline that. Sorry, Mages Guild. We're going on a pilgrimage to the Greybeards at some stage. You know what? I imagine that's why we have the option to go on a pilgrimage. Because we're the Dragonborn. Okay, cool. Um, let's carry on with the Coronation. The White Gold Tower is full of lords, knights, and foreign emissaries representing the most distinct nations of Tamriel. The throne room is all decorated and your crown awaits you at the throne as you slowly walks... Sorry? As you slowly walks in and takes it in your hands. That wasn't me this time. You start to, you start to fell the crown waiting on your head as it fits perfect just over your ears. Everyone cheers and applauds you. Everyone... Sorry. Everyone cheers and applauds as you show your new crown around and make a brief speech. May, he, may my reign be prosperous, or time to light the dragon fires. Now, if we light the dragon fires, I think all it prevents is, if we go to Hermes Mora, because I don't think I added this option to our rank, it prevents a Diedrich invasion. So I think we light the dragon fires, because it also gives you the bonus, lit the dragon fires successfully, which makes all your vassals like you. You walk to the temple in the temple district. And see the unmistakable decorated ritual circle where the sacred dragon fires once burnt, keeping the barrier between none and oblivion stable. Only those with the dragon blood and the amulet of kings may reaffirm the ancient covenant with Akatosh. My blood and the amulet shall light those sacred fires. The fires are rekindled and suddenly erupt into a nearly blinding flash of light. You have ignited the sacred dragon fires. This is a clear sign of your divine will to rule, and the barriers between none and oblivion have been sealed. My reign is blessed. Gain the trait, ignited the dragon fires. General opinion plus 5, same religious opinion plus 10. 200 prestige and 100 favor. Hey, that's awesome. Um, we're being approached by the Dark Brotherhood? Not in the least. Thank you. So what do we need to join the Greybeards? Uh, okay, we just need to wait till two more months time. Awesome. So we could go on a pilgrimage, although I'm not sure if that's whether or not you can do that. Did I just start the... Oh, God, no. <laughs> I thought that was maybe a secret cult for um, for the Alrein Divinity, but of course we've got a secret religion for Hermes Mora, haven't we? We might want to go across our vassals and ask them for conversion. So let's start at the top. Request a religious conversion. That's just someone to everyone. This might take some time. Uh, so, you know, maybe you might want to skip ahead a little bit. I would love to edit this, but whenever I edit videos, it means that I have to spend about three hours longer uploading it, because my internet's terrible. Uh, why don't we just request conversion of those we can, because it's not going to be many, and I'm not going to mess around, like, 
killing them off so they're not zealous so we can convert them then. Let's just get a decent amount of them converted uh, so that we're going to have less religious issues. And of course, as the legions convert, the provinces themselves are more likely to convert if they haven't already. Um, we really need to get a lot of these uh, theological vassals converted so that we can start stacking up the College of Cardinals or whatever we're going to call it. And the big thing I want to say is if you guys have any thoughts on what we can do next with this series, let me know. If you've got any really great ideas for um, for what Felithisimir can do now that he is the, the new emperor, the dragonborn emperor, I'd love to hear them. I have an idea regarding the sunset invasion, so I'm going to reserve that one. Uh, we can't seem to convert anyone else. Is that just because maybe we've got too many outgoing requests? Good, good, good. They're all agreeing. Somebody said no. You know, that was pretty good. And we can tell the difference because I specifically made a point of making it so that these follow the western shields. So this, this person is our rank, as you can see by their different shields. So we can go to all these provinces as and when we see them and request conversion if they'll allow it. This is just something I'll do while we play rather than uh, wasting a lot of time on it. Oh, we can get the straight mystic again. Sweet. Because we are a scholar. All right. We do want to go back to Hyrothgar. How far away off that are we? One more month. And a 22nd Imperial Uprising. Why not? How better to mark the coronation than with another Imperial Revolt? And a cult of Hermes. Wait. We like Hermes Mora. Okay. Um... Is this guy good with Marshall? He is. 40 Marshall. You know what? You can lead the troops. I'm quite fine with that. You know what? I think he's a good successor to, to, uh, to Alrang. Oh god. Imperial Cult of Meridia Uprising. Okay. This is what I was worried about. Once we've sorted out the realm. And okay. We've also got an adventure threat. Sorted out the realm. We've got the religion sorted. I will. Um, we'll start unifying the elves under Alrang. We'll head over to. Uh. Alanor and convince them that it's a good idea. What we really need is a standing army always down in Argonia. What's our retinue cap? We can hire a few more. I might even split the 6,400 in half. Um, head to the Imperial City with this slot. Merge them and then head south. Okay, we're getting nightmares because of Vermina. Right? I assume that's where we claim the Skull of Corruption. This is really bad. Holy shit. No, 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 no. We don't care about your plots. Alright, everything's out of hand. The council's content. That's a start. Rebels killed this poor lady after something happened. Uh, they took a tribe? Did they really? Where, where did they... You know what? Let's not worry about it. So let's crush this one. Something dealt with. And a false demand. Alright, so we should have... Oh, so th these two I assume are... Oh, they're the same revolt. Where are you? Peasant revolt for Welk. Where is Welk? Um, leading troops in all round provinces. Oh yeah, I remember this. Yeah, no, cool. This is the guy that is the uh, the Omni leader. Right, yeah, no, that's that's fine. That's absolutely not an issue. Uh, no, we're not going to found a religious cult ever. Let's join the Greybeards mid-war. Excellent, thank you. No, uh, sure, we'll go to High Rothgar now. Sure, our standing armies can deal with this. Oh, God, this is an absolute mess. Alright, send the retinue down to here. I want to keep some up there so that we can deal with. Oh, my God. So that we can deal with any revolts that might crop up in Skyrim. After a small trip, you've reached the first emblem. Before the birth of men, the dragons ruled all of Mondas. Shall continue my pilgrimage. We've done this event before, so I won't read all of them. Don't worry about it. He could also die doing the 7,000 steps. That's something else that could happen. Die, beasts. I don't think he's going to have any problems, just as Aurang pretty much destroyed them all. Oh no, the Colovian Badger died. I honestly don't care. We've got too much to worry about right now. Um, so the second option, I'll just recap this will always succeed because one of his attributes are high enough. So, we're going to always pick that option if we have it. Oh, I love the brisk Skyrim weather. It's invigorating. We're in the middle of a blizzard. Shall I continue my pilgrimage? I wonder how long it would take him to learn the Thum, and I wonder if he can do it. Because what did Alrang get? He had, like, level 3 Thum, from what I recall. So, 
in theory, he might be able to go even higher. Because I think that was like advanced though. Maybe there's something more. Maybe you could like an actual master on it. Alright, how are we doing in terms of armies? They're just about to deal with that one. The necromancer confer with each other very well, the mage says. We have nothing more to discuss. Be on your way. Thanks. Follow Thysimir. Immediately crowns himself, then he's off to deal with necromancers. I think Garang will be proud. Onwards. Shall I continue my pilgrimage? We're almost there. Okay, we've got a, uh, what's this? The troll? Yeah. I shall visit the Greybeards. That's sort of why we're here. I wish to join you, Greybeard Arpen Bokar the Hunter, who I assume is my vassal. Thanks. I wish to join your order. Breathe and focus. I wonder how long it'll take him to learn the Thune, then. Whether or not it'll... I was kind of hoping it would trigger, like, instantly, because, he's, you know, like in Skyrim, you go up to the top of High Hrothgar, and then you basically shout at some old men. Are you serious? We just beat you. Oh, there we go. Basic understanding. Perhaps it's due to my natural skills or because the Greybeard's focus on my training, but I've gained a greater understanding of the Thume. Sweet. And one of our fellow members of the Greybeards was burned at the stake, which seems... Um... Seems a bit wrong. Okay. So we will keep um, some of our retinue. It's a shame we can't get a slightly larger retinue, but we will keep some of it around Argonia. Because my vassals have just gone crazy and started conquering whatever the hell they can get their hands on at this stage. Uh, let's go ahead and put some... Oh, we only need to see who his heir is. What have we got? Oh, she's pretty good. So we have Princess Deldea of Tamriel. She's a master agent. She's strong, fair, attractive, genius. Uh, she's hardy. She's got dragon blood as well. She's a master bard. Wow, these... She's really good. Okay, who else have we got? Hinamir, who's also attractive, hardy, genius, strong, dragon-blooded. Expert sorcerer. We've got, uh, Exica, Essica. We can also, uh, designate our error as well, by the way, because we have open succession on, or designated succession, I should say. Um, she's not a genius, but she's, she's okay. Then we have child four, Alanwe. Again, another fair, strong genius. Damn, this guy had some really good children. Genius Fair Agile, Princess Roma. Then we have uh, Princess Amory. She's again another very well rounded character, just along with the congenital traits. And then his son, his, his human son, who is just dragon blooded. So we know it's definitely uh, definitely our son. Kind of in Thrift. I don't think. So who was better? I think it was between the first two. I think she is probably our best heir. By a long shot. So this is our grandson. Who is also strong, fair, genius, hardy, dragon-blooded. Wow. Okay. Our other grandson is not so good. And our third grandson is not so good either. So we want this guy to be our eventual heir. This one here. So I'm actually going to have him educated. By, uh, by us, I suppose. Makes the most sense, right? We'll also restrict his marriage. And he is of our house, because I assume she married matrilineally. Yeah, good idea. Okay. So now we've got succession sorted out just in case we can't get the Ogmer in time. Once we've dealt with all of this, we can turn our attention elsewhere. Okay. Where's this? Oh, so this was the guy that's leading armies everywhere all at once. Fight every battle. All at once. In your mind. Thanks, Peter. Okay. Well, we're good then. We're good. So Hermes Mora... Because we are a Dragonborn, we're going to gain plus 5 Ardor within a month. And because, as long as we keep offering to him, we're going to gain another plus 5 Ardor on top of that. So we can keep a nice, sort of, stable amount going with him. Um, besides that, obviously we can't get anything from Aorang yet because he's aloof. Now the other thing I wanted to ask, if there was any ideas you've got for Aorang to give us. So, so for us, for boons to accept from Aorang. I've got a pretty cool event coded where, you know what, I won't spoil it. Where we get a, a random item from a collection of items. Let's put it that way. Uh, all of which have come up in the campaign and are relevant to our rank. So if you've got any ideas for that, let me know. I'm quite happy to implement pretty much anything for him. Because he's kind of just, you know, like a fun extra thing that we've we've sorted out. The religious map mode. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess. So I made it so ideal masters will never convert uh, with, with the event. So all the ideal masters problems remained ideal masters. I figured that makes the most sense. 
Um, if you are Aeliad, there was a, a chance, a much higher chance you convert. And if you were Oriel and Aeliad, it had the highest chance to convert. If you liked Elrang, that's when it came up with a really high percentage. Um, certain Oriel characters had a chance to convert, depending on whether or not they liked Elrang. So obviously a lot of people liked him. Even some of the Somerset Isles converted. Look at this. Obviously, again, not the rulers themselves, but the, the peasants in the Somerset Isles. Is that one on... Oh yeah, this is ours. This is something our vassal took that I noticed, randomly. Um, so that's also become Arang Divinity. Besides that, it's mostly just Ideal Masters and uh, Orgnum still. I'm going to change the color of it, because I've only just noticed it's also the, exactly the same color as uh, the Alm Civi, which is very annoying. But that's not too bad. That's an easy fix. As for the culture map mode, yeah. Tamriana is pretty much entirely alien, and some of Skyrim as well. I did notice one province converted to uh, Falmer. Look at this. They've got their own unique building set, like made of uh, made of ice. That's very cool. If we get the whole of Skyrim to convert to Falmer, I'd be fine with that. Honestly, don't mind if they're a different uh, culture. And maybe we'll also focus on making Morrowind Dunmer. But I think that'll do for now. That was pretty good. I feel like we got we well we got a hell of a lot done in this episode. You know, we we literally ascended, founded our own planet of oblivion. We've got Ames Mora and Elrang himself on the uh, on the Deidre tab. We've got a new religion set up, which we now got to convert. We've got to start setting up the College of Cardinals, which is going to take quite a while. Um, we've got to look for temple holdings and basically ask them if they'll convert to our religion. Could take a while. We could also revoke titles, but uh, that would be pretty unfair. And if you have any questions or any suggestions you'd like to see change to the mod, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Besides that, thank you for watching. I, I can't wait to hear your feedback on the series as well and the podcast, obviously. And uh, see you next episode.